instance. Uh, well, I need the uh, edit monitor on if I could. Okay, I've got one question right off. How did you guys pick that song? Um, my best friend's on. She picked this song. I mean, it goes with the song perfectly. It's been awesome. Uh, it was, that was fantastic. Thank you for that. Coming all the way down here just for us. Yes. Okay. Well, my daughter did a nice little sermon already. So that was good. Uh, we don't have the uh, TV on, which I need or should have and make it easier. So the title of this sermon is Let There Be Light. And the children's story was perfect. The music was perfect. And in our hearts, I mean, we know God is a light, a kind of presence of glory. And He's our glory. He's our light. And we want to focus on this uh, today. So let there be light. It sounds so simple. And as we look at it just a little bit, and if you remember some of your high school days, or even junior high, or maybe college, you realize that it's not quite so simple. Let there be light. So, chapter one. In the beginning, God. Now, everybody's got to get that straight right off. God started all this. There's nobody else. In the beginning, God. But what does it mean also in the beginning? What does that mean? The beginning of creation? Yeah, we can think about that. But I, I want us also, you know, to think of uh, the definition for the universe. And we're talk about we're gonna we're gonna be talking about space and mass you know, the planets and so on, but also energy. But there's another factor there, and that factor is time. Time is part of this universe, it's part of us, part of everything we do. And uh, in the beginning, God created both the heaven and the earth. A lot of people believe that that creation of the heaven and earth was done, oh, maybe eons ago, or a long time ago, how do we know what happened when God spoke? It is written. We're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, but there's no waiting period. When the word goes out of the mouth of the Lord our God, I'm just for real. It will not go out void. It takes place in this instant. And... Uh, so, created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was void, you know, nothing on it. It was without form, and there was darkness upon the face of the earth. What is the definition of darkness? No absence of light. Yeah, there's no light. Turn off the switch, you're walking in the walls, you know, it's, there's... The light goes, then there's dark. It's not like dark is a creative thing otherwise. It's my understanding of it. But God said, let there be light. And there was light. Now this is our real focus here today is light. But God saw the light, and it was good. God divided the light from the darkness. I think I'm supposed to And so God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light, and it was, again, as Kim's story, it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. Now one thing we know about God is there's no part of Him is darkness. He's zero. He's all light, all glory. And, and we need to realize that. 
uh, for sure. <laughs> so we have again the universe. The space is the you know you know we, we have three heavens in the Bible. There's our atmosphere around our planet, but then there's the space, the the heavens, celestial heavens that is called in between the planets and stars and that sort of thing. But then there's a third heaven, and the third heaven is what would we say? That's where God. We talked about this in our Sabbath school lesson. Uh, that's where God dwells. So wherever God dwells, there's going to be light. Amen. So, but there's another aspect of this we're going to uh, explore a little bit, and I hope you brought your thinking caps with uh, And that's the energy that's needed to run this universe. Uh, I mean, we have stars, sun, candles, you know, they're exothermic, they give off light, they give off heat, uh, you know, but there's other matter that reflects light, I mean, the moon is reflected. God originates light in our church, reflects that light. But all this is, again, is functioning in time, from the beginning of the world, with our clock started. So what is light? A form of energy. Radiant energy. You know, rays that travel freely through space. The part of radiant energy that we see is called visible light. And, or simply light. So we see visible light all around us. It's, it's here. And what color is it? It's white. Or is it white? Is it really white? I mean, it looks like white. Uh, but there's other kinds of radiant energy as well. There's infrared, you know, radio waves, ultraviolet rays, X rays, gamma rays. I'm going to make sure I'm not missing something here. I want to, before we talk about this part, well, no, let's, let's just go through this. All right, so photons, all light comes from tiny particles of matter called atoms, and if the atoms of all the elements contain a higher level, they get excited, they, they raise up, they're charged, you know, electrons, so, you know, the atoms, neutrons, electrons, protons. Uh, so we have, when it returns to its normal energy level, the atom releases energy, in a tiny bundles called photons, and we have light. Now we have visible light. Now in all, that's the visible light, and we, we're talking about the wavelength. Uh, and you know, we would use a, a term we could use in, in the metric system, nanometers, but uh, for angstroms is another way to say it. Now an angstrom is a way, you know, between these, between these waves, you know, a certain amount of space. And what we're looking at on this is uh, from 7,000 to 4,000 angstrom that we're seeing as a visible light. So the other rays we talk about are outside that light. But actually, as we look at this gradient, and it is a gradient, it's not just, you know, seven basic colors. Uh, Kim, what are the seven colors? Aurora, I mean, she's going to do it quietly. Red, orange, yellow, we see it. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, uh, indigo, and violet. Violet. <laughs> so, uh, now all elements, if, if we heat them, say in a lab or, or even like from the sun, if we uh, take a, well, do spectrum analysis on it, I don't know if I can even see it, right now. spectroscopy, you know, it's a scope that help, but it helps break up the light. And, and we can identify elements just by the light of what it is. So, I mean, there's elements in the stars, there's elements in the sun, and we can actually 
receive that here in this earth and we can break that up. We can, you know, does it have hydrogen and helium and oxygen? nitrogen, all these things, we can identify those. You know, we can identify its carbon just through the light. Gold silver has its own imprint that can be identified. Now, it's already just starting to sound a little more complicated. Let it be light. But God has layers and layers and layers and layers of light. Uh, but there's also the angstroms is the unit of length, but it's to express electromagnetic wavelengths. And we're gonna talk about that just a little bit. Not gonna do too much more of this. Everybody knows what this is. Now this has gotta be one of the most beautiful ones that I've ever seen, probably in this picture. Um, and uh, I remember we were camping with pathfinders and stuff one time, and this little girl with her red hair, she was small, like Rosie. I'm not sure where all the kids. Somebody's still there. Uh, but she's sitting on this log, and she's got this red hair. She's just, you see her from the back, and she's looking up at this rainbow that's up in the sky. And she's just looking at it and looking at it. But I'll remember that picture a long time. Uh, rainbows are special. In the heavens, in the throne of God, is it a rainbow? Yes. Absolutely, it is a rainbow. There's a refraction of light, you know, uh, you know, like a prism refracts the lights and exposes the different ones. You can be, you know, watering in the garden and you got the sun shining through the spray of it and you can see, you know, the rainbow effect. But there's a complete circular rainbow around the Lord our God and heaven, around the throne of God. And so, how cool is that? Then there's lasers. Everybody knows what a laser is now, probably. I mean, we all do. I mean, not too long ago, it wasn't that common. But, um, so lasers uh, emit a, a, you know, a very, a, you know, it stands for light amplification stimulated emissions of radiation. So, it's a lot easier to think about light than it is all those names. Uh, but it's a narrow beam of photons. So the photons is, again, that you know, thing that uh, produces the light. Uh, but it has the same energy, same frequency, and it produces a very pure light. You know, my other pointer that wasn't working for some reason had a, a, a laser on it, but uh, so I can't demonstrate that, but we all know what it is. But it's highly directional. You know, there was a, a, a laser can carry TV signals. It can, uh, telephone voices, we all know that. Laser was placed on the moon, and they were able to exactly measure the distance from the moon to planet Earth. So, uh, a laser can actually burn a hole right in a diamond. You know, one of the hardest substance. Surgery. You know, diabetics, you know, have hemorrhage, you know, their eyebrows, the retina. And it can affect vision, they can lose their vision. And Ricky, your brother, was blind from that, right? And and uh, but they can take a laser and they can cauterize the bleeding. You know, as they catch it early, so they, you know they have to have frequent checkups, and uh, and they they can help that. You know, make the vision last a lot longer. So praise the Lord for that. But you can you know cut through soft tissue. You know, for surgery, you can cut, you can ablate, just meaning kind of destroy tissue. You have cancer or something there. Uh, you know, they can use a lot of kidney stone or something to help pulverize it. But you know, coagulation is another way. Effects in doing that. Now we're almost done with this part. So, um, anyhow, we have also the electromagnetic spectrum. So we have visible light, but around that visible light, we have electric waves, and we also have magnetic waves. So uh, we have 
protons of light are surrounded by the electric field and the magnetic field. So then this is a lot more complicated than, and what, what the reason we're going over that is coming up in just a minute. Speed of light, a lot of people know this one. 186,000 plus 282 miles a second. But in one year, how far will light travel? What does it say up there? 5.88 trillion miles in one year. And then we have all these stars that are hard, how far out? I mean, a lot, a lot, a lot of light years. And, you know, our own galaxy is, uh, uh, is at least 75,000 light years away. So if we multiply almost 6 trillion by 75,000, that's how far away, even just within our own Milky Way galaxy, and, and compared to all the galaxies that are out there in the history. The sun, the core of the sun, you know, you get different figures from different people, but 27 million degrees Fahrenheit, core of the sun, it is a definite exothermic reaction. You know, who set all that up? Now, the light was created on what day? Where did Kim go? I, Kim, on the first day, right? God said, let there be light. What day was the sun and the moon created? Fourth day. Fourth day. God is independent of the light from the sun and the moon and all these things that we think about. Uh, lightning, 300 million volts. It can be 300 million volts. It can heat the air to 60,000 degrees as it's going through there. So, you know, we have all the, the charge, you know, the charged electrons and stuff are, are on an atomic level. And everybody knows what breaking those bonds can do in today's world, uh, you know, with that bomb and that sort of thing, how you just want it. Light behaves like particles, which is quantum theory, and it behaves in waves, which is the wave theory. And, and so all this stuff uh, is, is again in this room. So why are we going over all this? You know, Ephesians 3, 9, God who created all things. And, and to, let me just read it from up there because I got it for them when I have this one. It says, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Again, the name for God in, in Genesis is Elohim. It's a plural form of God. And we have the Spirit moving across the waters. We have the Father there, we have Jesus there, and, and we have the Holy Spirit, and that's called God in, you know, in the Scriptures. But God who created all things, you know, it says that Jesus created all things, whether they're in heaven above, or heaven beneath. And so we do have, again, the creation even of Lucifer and all the angels by Jesus, with God in us also there. Genesis 1 3, let there be light, and there was light. You know, the, the magnetic energy spectrum, you know, there's three major forces of the universe. We got gravitational nuclear, electromagnetic, all of them are related to this one simple little phrase, let there be light, let there be light. Einstein's equation, energy, light, times the constant of light squared with the mass. So E equals mc squared. A lot of people know that, but they don't quite understand what all has to take place and how this is going to happen. That's for sure. And God created the energy 
you know, to not only run this world, but he created the energy to run all the worlds. So light is not dependent on sun or stars, but comes through God, the word of God, he spoke, and it was. All else is darkness. If you separate God, there's darkness. You know, we know that uh, everything is double to that which is in the Bible. In 1 Corinthians, it talks about first the physical, then it talks about the spiritual. And there's a physical application, and there's a spiritual application. You know, we can name just about anything and go through that and show that. So God is light, and in Him no darkness at all. Now, we as Christians, as believing in God, and as God who created all things, we need to believe this absolutely. There's no evil, there's no sin, there's no bad things in God. He's, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Who covered thyself with light as with a garment, who stretched out the heavens like a curtain. So again, Psalm 104 talks about him just stretching out the creation. But the light, Adam and Eve are clothed with what? With light. So what's the spiritual application? One with God. That yeah, and, and it, I mean, we think about God, the, the purity of God, the holiness of God, the Shekinah glory of God, as we talked about, you know, last week for the, the Sabbath school lesson. Uh, light through the sanctuary, we can see God working and how he works, and he gives us ideas of how all this takes place. But they were covered with God's righteousness. They had the white robe of righteousness, which we have to have in order to make it in the heaven. That's a free gift, right? Mm -hmm. We're going to talk about this a little bit. So 1 Timothy 6, 16, 14. Appearing out of our Lord Jesus Christ, you know, waiting for that, which is his times he will show who is the blessed only potentate, King of kings and Lord of lords. Is Jesus really King of kings and Lord of lords in our own hearts? We see that, we understand that. Who only has immortality. I mean, somehow, the Father, Son, and Spirit are in fact one God. And we don't and cannot always put that into simple terms. But God only has immortality. And dwelling in the light which no man can approach into. Lucifer wanted to go into that Shekinah glory in heaven. And he could not. Christ in heaven. Michael means one who is like God. Was also veiled in heaven. Just as he came to be veiled on this earth. And veiled, what did he veil? He veiled his glory. When Jesus came to this earth. And flesh was that veil. Was part of that veil. He did everything else. But if, what's the glory? He's a consuming fire with that. If we have sin in our hearts, if we have unforgiven sin, when we see God and then coming with full power and glory and all those angels, uh, you know, that will be what destroys the wicked, you know, at the second coming. God only has immortality glory in the light which no man can approach unto, which no man has seen nor can see, to whom be honor and power and everlasting Amen. So there's a special spiritual light, absolutely. And we have that question today, you know, well, what is that kind of glory? You know, what is that word? And, and, and it is the presence of God, where God dwells. And uh, so, now the inspired word of God frequently associates the presence of God with awesome, brilliant light. There is more to light than the physical laws that we have touched upon. Science cannot adequately come to terms with light. The very essence is a divine, and we kind of talked about that already. 
All right, so we're going to do a few more Bible texts. We don't have too much longer to go here. We just did that. So the scriptures, Psalm 119, has so much wisdom in it. And uh, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. You know, so the entrance of thy words, God's words, into our heart gives us light. It gives us understanding <coughs> unto the simple. 2 Peter 1.19. We have also a sure word of prophecy. What is prophecy? But again, a light that shines in a path for us to follow. So you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place, because it will expose and get rid of the darkness if we stick with the body, stick with the Lord, you know, to follow. Until the day dawns and the day star rises in our hearts. What, what are we talking about? A day star rising in our hearts. God. This is our, you know, Nicodemus. What is he supposed to do? He's supposed to be born again. And we'll see this light. It'll start happening. We'll understand. We'll understand about the word of God. And, and we'll realize that salvation comes by without the, sh I mean, the shedding of blood. It's the blood of Jesus <laughs> dying on the cross. And he died not just the first death, he died the second death, separation from the Father at that time. So, a light that shineth in a dark place, but if, when it shines in our dark heart, then we have, a light. <coughs> we have that born again experience that gives us life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. So when the day star arises in our hearts, that's to Jesus and us being born again and us making that commitment to follow God, to follow His light. Testimonies, volume 5 says, I am presenting to you that which the Lord has presented to me. Now this is E-G-W, L-N-G-Y. And she writes this, presenting to you that which the Lord has presented to me. I do not write expressing my own ideas. They are what God has opened before me in vision. The precious rays of light shining from the throne. I accept that. I can read the words and I can compare them to this word. And I know that they're in harmony. Absolutely. But she says, guess what? She says, I'm the lesser light. This is the greater light. You know, in Christ, our Lord is the kind of light, absolutely. So Matthew, you are the light of the world. Who is the light of the world? Jesus. You guys. <coughs> ye, all ye, all of ye. Oh. So you are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You know, you know, I, I remember the first time I saw Las Vegas, you know, from well, one of the mountains that come into the valley or something. And, you know, just the way, I mean, it was at night. We were getting, going through there, and, and it was man, lit up like crazy. But neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it, and given light unto all that are in the house. Now in the holy part of the sanctuary, there's seven, seven candlesticks. That represent the seven churches of Revelation. And there's a light on each one of those, and Christ is in the midst of those. And we got the table of showbread, he's the bread of life, and he's also the high priest that receives our prayers. But he giveth light unto all that are in the house. You know, like Hamilton does. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works. And that's uh, that's a must. Glorify your Father which is in heaven. The Father is glorified by us accepting this, doing this, and having this light. I mean, He is extremely happy. Now, we're, we're to give more glory to Him. How can we give more glory than what God already has? Just the volume, one more person, you know, maybe it's the neighbor, you know, maybe it's our own children, you know, that working so hard for. 
They all bring glory to the Lord. But if we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, mm -mm. we lie. And do not, do not the truth. If we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. So, the God forgives us our sin and our sins in the past are forgiven, but he now wants us to walk in the light. So that's justification, accepting Christ, his white robe of righteousness, this light that he has to cover us and cover us for our past sins. But then he wants to sanctify us and that's with the Holy Spirit coming inside, guiding us, leading us, helping us, giving us power to be able to overcome as he overcame by the blood of Jesus. <clears throat> justification, sanctification, and we're waiting for glorification with the, be with the Lord. So the fathers of Christ are to shed light into the darkness of the world through the Holy Spirit. And God is a light as it becomes a transforming power in the life of the receiver. By implanting in their hearts the principles of his word, the Holy Spirit develops in them the attributes of God. By beholding, we become. By beholding Christ, we think about Christ, we read about Christ, you know, we become like Christ. The Holy Spirit develops in man the attributes of God, the light of his glory, his character is to shine forth in his followers. Now this is so important. We talked, Pastor John focused so much on the love of God, you know, through the Sabbath School lesson today. And that love is to be reflected, of course, to us. But it also says, thus they are to glorify God, to lighten the path to the bridegroom's home. What are we waiting for? We're waiting for Jesus to come back, but we're going to where? We're going to heaven and the new city of Jerusalem, and the, the bride is talked about as the new city. Jerusalem, the New Jerusalem. Uh, and, but we're all inside that city. And, and uh, as it comes, I understand. So to, but to the city, to the marriage supper of the Lamb, that's where we will have a physical dinner. Everybody that's saved, we're supposed to be in heaven and sitting at one table. I, I don't even know how that's going to be possible in any way, shape, or form. Uh, but the Mary Supper of the Lamb, uh, Christ will welcome us to the city and we will, we will be able to share that with him. That's the only last part of this thing. He's in the Day of Atonement now and the, uh, I don't know, the autumn festivals, but then you know, the Feast of Tabernacles, it's called. So it is the love of God continually transferred to the man that enables him to impart life. If we don't have that love in our hearts, you know, we're going we're gonna to try hard, but it's going to be missing something very essential. The light of the Son of Righteousness, and notice it says S-U-N, one of the names of God, the Son of Righteousness, because He is that light. He's the S-O-N, also the Son of God. But the Son of Righteousness is shine forth in good works, in words of truth and deeds of holiness. <clears throat> and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. So not only will we be lights here in sharing and giving to other people, but in heaven itself uh, we'll be as stars forever and ever. And even the, you know, the crowns will contain you know, some of those lights and somehow of those that we, we help bring to Jesus. I mean, just amazing, wonderful things. The love of Christ, the love of our brethren, will testify to the world that we have been with Jesus and have learned of him. Then will the message of the third angel swallow with a loud cry. The third message is, I mean, the third angel I mean, fear God, give our glory to him, our judgments come, worship him, obey the heaven, earth, and the sea. Uh, give glory to him, but then come out of Babylon. Now, that's the part that we're in right now. 
Come out of Babylon, come out of the false, come out of the darkness into the light. And that's basically our message, is to give that light. And the last warning message to planet Earth. And in heaven, I saw no temple. There and for the Lord God. Now we're talking about now after the millennium, a thousand years, and the new city of Jerusalem comes down out of heaven. And, we're, and, and there's no temple inside the new city of Jerusalem. Why? The temple is for where God dwells. But he dwells now, where? In the new city of Jerusalem. That's where God will dwell. The Father, Son, Spirit, all be there. This kind of presence will be there. Whether we see the Father, I, I go back and forth on that. It seems like we may, but uh, and somehow, but... Uh, there's other passages that maybe suggest, I don't know, that if we will. But the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine in it, for the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. Now, some people think there's no sun, no moon on the, in the, on the new earth as it's remade, but we're told that the sun's going to be seven times brighter than it was here now. And the glory of the Lord is in the temple. So inside the temple, there's no sun. No moon. We don't need any lights. God just, you know, we don't have to turn on a light to see where we're going, look in the closet, you know, pull out a flashlight or something. You know, none of that. So the nations of men that are saved shall walk in the light. All the nations. Every, never again will sin enter in. People always say, well, why did God allow this? Why did God, you know, allow Satan to do this? And, but it is to demonstrate, to witness, to prove, and show mankind what sin does, and it surely is death, and the destruction of the wicked with even the second death. Fear him they will destroy both body and soul in hell, the lake of fire. So shall walk in the light, and the kings of the earth do bring their glory and honor into it. They will have the glory too. We will have glory, because we all will have that. And the gates of it shall not be shut. At all by day, for there shall be no night there. So praise the Lord. I saw a new heaven, new earth, for the first heaven, for first who passed away, and there was no more sea. And I saw John, and I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride, adorned for a husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God. And this is, again, what this will be. This earth is going to be the tabernacle of God. This temple, the new city of Jerusalem, is going to be his tabernacle. And he's, it is with man. Man, the only thing that falls. We're the sore spot. You know that. You know, in the whole universe, all the whole creation. And Christ comes down for us. He will dwell with him. We shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right, we have music. I sing the mighty power of God. Let's all stand, number 88.